call a lot in my age group. In the days of Cherry and the Pirates, that famous comic strip during World War II, the hero was a guy named Flip Corkin. And he was actually an Air Force colonel named Phil Cochran. I asked if I could be assigned to that. And within a short period of time, of course, orders came through and I got assigned to the Air Commandos and found myself in the Pacific. I only shot down one Japanese aircraft. I only saw about three. Well, I had been in the Pentagon working for the Secretary of the Air Force when the Korean War started to, to reach its at height. I transferred to Korea and went into combat there. We were trying to establish the capabilities of the saber jet to drop bombs in North Korea, and if we could do this, then maybe we would attract the MiGs to come up and fight with us, and then we'd be able to get more MiGs. That was really the bottom. Who cared about bombs? The bottom line was let's shoot down more MiGs. The pilots that we were up against were Russian. We knew that because we listened to their air ground, air to air communication. It was all in Russian. We were outnumbered tremendously. But we had such a success ratio that it was just incredible in the annals of warfare. We shot down 14 MiGs to every one F-86 we lost. If you could get next to a MiG, uh, you were pretty assured that you weren't going to have any trouble and you weren't going to get shot down. Of course, that sounds funny considering the fact that I was shot down, but I can use the weak excuse that I was shot down by ground fire and not by an aircraft. As I turned around, I looked down on the ground and I saw a truck going down the highway, and I thought, well, I'll just knock that truck off and have a big story to tell the guys when I get home in the bar tonight. I got hit by ground fire. The cockpit filled with smoke. I called on the radio and said, he gave a, a pitiful cry, you know, I've been hit. Of course, that was it. I was captured. And the thoughts that go through your mind is, God, what have I done today? I mean, dear God, why are you after me? I've been a good guy. As they began to question me, they came forth with an accusation that I had been conducting grim warfare against them. And they were charging me as an international criminal, war criminal. Each time I was taken back to my cell, uh, I'd try to reflect and try to figure out what was going on. And I could see that brainwashing thing that was happening to me. They were keeping me awake for a long period of time, constant interrogation, practically no sleep at all, and I couldn't concentrate on things, and I knew it. I knew my mind was slipping. I decided that they were going to get to me. I was going to do something that would be harmful to my country and to the free world and make a confession that I knew was false. And uh, so I decided to, to commit suicide. And... Uh, I have a lot of warning for young people these days who want to commit suicide. If, you, if they're going to try it, they shouldn't try it by slashing their wrist because it hurts. <laughs> There's no question about it. Anyway, I did that. I finally cut my wrist, and I had blood going pretty good. And, of course, the guards came rushing in with flashlights, and they saw the blood and came out and got me. They laid off of me for about 10 days and fed me intravenously. And then at the end of 10 days, approximately, they said, okay, we're going to start again. I probably made about a... 10-page confession, and in that, I put in all kinds of phony stuff so that anybody could tell that it was a phony confession, and there had been coercion involved, and I had been living in solitary confinement the whole time, hadn't talked to an American or a, or a Caucasian at all for, for about 16 months. We were the last group of prisoners to be exchanged during the prisoner war exchange. I was met by the senior intelligence person at Fifth Air Force, whose first comment was, my God, Bud, we didn't know you were alive. A handful of prisoners had to show cause why they should be retained in the military service. Several left, several uh, continued to stay on. And in my case, uh, I got orders to go to a special weapons course at Sandia, which is a big atomic energy nuclear war kind of thing, which was sort of an absolvement. They sort of said, you're OK. We're going to let you know some more secrets. I look back on the military service as my fondest days when I really enjoyed myself. I think the military service is the noble service because it has the highest form of integrity of any profession. We need integrity. I think I did the best I could do. I believe in America, and I believe that it needs to be defended, and, and I was willing to, to put my life on the line to make sure that democracy prevails, and I would do it again tomorrow, this afternoon yet. Uh, I'm a little, little old now to pull nine Gs, but uh, still, if 
if it's required, then I think we all ought to we all ought to take a look around us and say we've got it made here in this country, and we've got to preserve that for our young people. In the next issue of Air Force Now, over 25,000 college students are pursuing Air Force commissions through the Reserve Officer Training Corps. The University of Southern California is part of the plan. Air Force medical personnel must go through medical readiness training each year. Visit Wilfred Hall Medical Center and see combat readiness in the making. We live a day in the life of a Vietnam warrior. The F-105 Sunday season. All this and more coming soon in Air Force Now.